Shortly after the end of World War I, airplanes became increasingly more popular in the United States and in Spokane, Washington. Did you know that Fells Field was the Inland Northwest's first airport, as well as one of the oldest federal airports in the United States? This is Kayla Gilmore, and you are watching Did You Know in History? Field, which is Feltz Field today, was leased to the Northwest Aircraft Company, which eventually became the hub for commercial flights in the region. Shortly after the airport was built, pilots began giving passenger flights to Lewiston, Idaho, and Seattle and Tacoma, Washington. Feltz Field became the destination not only for commercial flights, but became the region's first Air National Guard unit when the Guards set up their own airstrip in 1924. Then, in 1926, the airport gained even more success when an air mail service made their own addition to the growing airport. Earl Hosington Field changed its name to Feltz Field in 1927 after Lieutenant James Beale Fields, who was a World War I pilot and a Spokane local, who died in a plane crash when his plane fell from the sky. Spokane's own Feltz Field became the finishing line for the National Air Derby in 1927. The race involved pilots flying from New York to Spokane in 24 hours or less. Almost 100,000 people showed up to witness the winners of the derby, as well as partake in a number of activities that lasted for days. Some of the entertainments included air acrobatics, parachute drops, and speed races. Only 16 of the original 24 pilots completed the derby. Charles Holman won the race and the $10,000 prize as he finished the race with a record of 19 hours and 42 minutes. With the conclusion of the derby, barnstorming flights and other aeronautical activities were still popular in the region. A man by the name of Lieutenant Nick Mamer, who served in the United States Army Air Service during World War I, put Feltz Field and Spokane on the map again in 1929. Mamer broke the record of a non-stop flight of 120 hours from Spokane's Feltz Field to New York and then back again. Not only did he break the non-stop flight record, he was the first to complete a transcontinental refueling, which was the first refueling above 8,000 feet. Even before Mamer completed his cross-country flight, he was a very popular pilot in the local Spokane area. He trained National Guard pilots, took photojournalists to remote locations, fought forest fires, and took hunters to the backcountry. After his famous cross-country flight, he became a pilot for the Northwest Airlines in 1936. Mamer kept flying until his death in 1939, when his Lockheed Super Electra broke apart and went down over Montana, with himself, his co-pilot, and eight passengers aboard. In recognition of all of Mamer's accomplishments in his life, Feltz Field built a Nick Mamer Memorial Clock, which you can still see today. When the United States joined in World War II in the 1940s, Fells Field's runways were deemed too small for the new military aircraft and commercial planes that arrived in Spokane. This caused the creation of the new Spokane International Airport at Geeger Field, which is just west of Spokane. Even though Fells Field lost most of its traffic, the small airport is still used by hobby pilots, experimental aircraft, and even flight schools. Thank you so much for watching my video. I hope you liked it. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and I'll be posting a new video every Tuesday at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. 
I hope to see you next time. Thank you. Bye.